Uh, funding free software development is very important and as a developer I would dream to do this during 100% of my time. So, uh, first time I heard about Rafael Herzog, he was uh, crowdfunding his uh, Debian handbook, the translation in English. So, uh, he's continuing this kind of work with a long time support, Debian, funding and the release, so he will talk about that. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So I'm here today because, well, I've been involved in the Debian long-term support project uh, since the start. It's been, uh, I think, five years. We started in June 2014 uh, with uh, long-term support of Debian 6 squeeze. So we'll go through five years of history quickly and discuss uh, how it went. Um, so I guess most of you know it already, but uh, the Debian LTS project is uh, about extending the security support of the Debian stable release from three years to five years. Three years is roughly what the Debian security team, the main security team provides, and we're extending it for uh, our two years more, which allows basically to skip a release if you're uh, running servers uh, for five years always. How did uh, this project start? Uh, really it started by a few Debian developers who were doing uh, internal long-term support for a few key packages uh, that, they that were important in their companies, in their use case, and they decided to team up together sh to share the work and to well make it available to everybody. Uh, so at that time we made a public call for others to join because uh, we were expecting that other companies were doing the same and they, they could let uh, their employee work uh, on the project. But at the same time, we wanted to offer the possibility to contribute with money and not only with employee time. So, uh, well, one option was to have many Debian developers come and say, hey, I'm here, you can hire me to work on this. But uh, it's not very practical. So uh, I used the fact that I uh, had uh, my own company to create a an offer where many Debian developers joined behind me to uh, collect the money from uh, sponsors and pay Debian developers. Uh, yeah, so that's a bit uh, uh, on the wiki page. Uh, there are everybody who accepts money to be paid uh, on LTS, but mainly you will fi we only find people who are working uh, as part of the team that uh, we created on Friction. So friction is really uh, an intermediary in this. Uh, uh, here you have a, a big list of sponsors, uh, and the friction is making invoice to them, uh, and we collect the money and we dispatch, we transfer this into work hours, and we dispatch those work hours to Debian contributors every month. At the end of the month, each uh, contributor is expected to provide a report. We check the report and publish this uh, on our website to make it transparent. So over five years there have been a few changes. Uh, one of them is that we added more architectures. Uh, at the start it was only limited to E386 and IMD64 and we added ARML and ARMHF. For stretch we will likely add also ARM64. At the start, with the limited funding, we supported only a subset of the packages, the most popular that were used by our sponsors. But uh, with time, we managed to have enough funding to support almost all packages. Um, some of those packages are quite hard to support. So, in, uh, for example, the Xen, we work with Creative, who has skilled people knowing Xen to maintain the backports that we need. So those are not uh, Debian developed. Uh, it's a 
It's also Debian developers mainly which are working at Creative, but uh, well, the, uh, they are not part of the usual Debian contributors uh, that uh, I manage. It's uh, really an invoice to another company. Uh, as I said at the start, the idea was to pull up resources and human resources from many companies, but uh, in fact, this quickly dried uh, because. Uh, well, the people, the Debian contributors that uh, Friction was, were paying, was paying uh, tend to be more reactive than employees who did that uh, part-time. And, uh, well, they just had nothing left to, to do when they were for the package that they were interested in. Uh, so, mainly nowadays, uh, almost all the important contributors to Debian LTS are uh, paid through the Friction sponsorship. Also, uh, at the start, we used to ask politely package maintainer to try to provide uh, updates for us if they had some time. We no longer ask it explicitly. They can still do it, but we no, no longer ask for it because we have enough resource to uh, handle most updates. Uh, there are a few exceptions. Uh, PostgreSQL is one of them uh, because uh, the main Debian package is maintained by uh, a Debian developer which is, uh, who is a creative employee, so they also maintain the PostgreSQL in, a, in the LTS suite. Uh, at the <laughs> every time that an LTS ends, which it no longer supports, there are a few companies who come up and say, hi, uh, why it did it does it stop so early? I need more. <laughs> uh, usually they, yeah, they come uh, two weeks before and uh, it's too late to organize anything. But uh, they made the mistake once and so for the second <laughs> LTS they, they, come they came earlier and uh, I also mentioned the possibility earlier in a public way. So we created an extended LTS for Wizzy. So it works a bit differently because there are far fewer sponsors and uh, uh, so we want to support all their packages but only uh, for a limited set of architectures because they're usually not using ARM device uh, but they don't pay what they want they have to pay what we ask them to to, uh, to because we want to have enough time to support all their packages uh, and we split that among all the sponsors uh, but some sponsor will want maybe six months more, just the time to migrate a few servers, and other will want to keep it alive for more. So the cost is re-evaluated each quarter. Uh, so when a sponsor stops to uh, participate, the other sponsors have to pay more for their package set. So that's how it works. So Wizzy was the first one first distribution where we offered the extended LTS and it will likely last until uh, end of this year. So it will uh, have provided uh, one and a half year more of support. Uh, there is this URL where you can find the repositories, the list of package supported and any information related to, to this project. Uh, now some interesting data, uh, some figures. So five years already, what I said. Uh, over the years, we paid 24 contributors, and there are four 14 of them who are active right now, and they were paid each month. We found uh, 215 uh, hours per month. And here you see how it evolved between uh, the start, five years before, and right now. The number of uh, contributors grow together with the number of uh, uh, hours funded. It's a deliberate choice. Uh, I did not want to have anyone... Uh, uh, well, I, I wanted to have a resilient team, so if anyone stops, uh, it's I'm not in a big trouble. But I also did not want anyone to be dependent on the income that Friction provided. They had to have something else besides LTS to... Uh, for the life for so it's always a part-time activity uh, when you're a uh, LTS contributor you, you get between uh, 15 and 30 uh, hours per month of work 
some figures about sponsors. Uh, we are close to 60 sponsors. Uh, you, you can see how they are uh, split among uh, platinum sponsors, gold, sil silver, bronze, etc. Obviously, there are more bronze than, than silver, but if you look closely at the amo uh, amount of hours that are sponsored, uh, it's more uh, well spread. So, uh, yeah. I, I prefer having lots of small sponsors because uh, it has fewer impact when one stops. Uh, but if we lose one platinum sponsor, it's I immediately uh, three days of work per month which are gone away. So uh, I prefer many small sponsors and few big, but it's quite well spread right now. Uh <laughs> It's a lot of money th that is going on uh, through friction to pet Debian contributors. The reports only speak about work hours, but the rate is fixed, so you can do the calculation yourself. And I made the calculation for you just to give some impressive figures. So we are close to 600,000 euros paid to various Debian L LTS contributors over the five years. So it's a lot for individuals like us. It's not so much for uh, big companies, but uh, <coughs> and the uh, single indiv individual who worked during the whole five years uh, got uh, about uh, 80,000 uh, euros. Uh, uh, well, more inst interestingly, uh, the former Debian project leader was part of the PED LTS contributor, and during his two years of leadership, he got sponsored by, uh, well, LTS sponsors and Friction. And surprisingly, nobody complained that uh, I bought or co sponsors bought undue influence on the leadership. So that's a good thing. <laughs> Maybe some people thought about it anyway, but nobody complained. Well, at the start, uh, uh, we did set up clear rules to try to avoid problems because uh, we knew that the pr topic was uh, uh, c can lead to problems. So there, there are rules to de to decide who can join, how hours are split among contributors, what must be done, what can be done on paid time, and who decides in case of problems. All the expectations are clear. At least I hope so. So basically, uh, anyone who is a Debian contributor, developer, maintainer, who has prior experience with security updates, uh, can join. Well, obviously, you need some programming skills because you have to write patches in many different packages. You have to have some uh, fiscal. Uh, well, I'm. Friction is a company, uh, I can only pay invoice, so you have to have a way to emit invoice, obviously. And you must accept some basic rules, uh, like privacy of uh, sponsored data. Uh, you, you have to accept to, public to publish your monthly reports. So, well, you must be aware that others know how, many you how much money you, you got through me and through Friction. Uh, you have to abide to the Debian Code of Conduct and uh, you have to make your best effort to meet the st quality standards of Debian in general and of the Debian security team in particular. Uh, now, how do we split hours among contributors? Well, it's simple, we split them evenly, but obviously not uh, all contributors have the same amount of time, so you can fix a limit. You can say, I don't want more than 10 hours or 12 hours, and most contributors do set a limit, so uh, there are only three or four which accept an inf infinite amount of work <laughs> every month. We also don't want to give too few hours because you can't really prepare a security update in two hours. You need uh, at least uh, four to five hours to do a serious job, so we have a minimum amount that we can uh, hand out. And uh, if we uh, are too many uh, for the amount of hours that we have, we would organize a rotation, but this never happened so far. Uh, as time grew, as work time available grew, uh, 
I always recruited new persons uh, and well, it works well so far. So what must be done, this is just basic work. So there's a CVE triaging, so handling incoming issue, looking wha whether they are applicable or not. Obviously prepare security update and publish them. There's an obligation to respond to queries to of other Debian contributors. There's nothing more annoying than when you come to do, uh, ask a question and you don't get any answer. And uh, this is not acceptable from, from someone who is paid, so there's this obligation. But we have also rules of what is acceptable to be done on paid time, even if it's not exactly the core of what we have to do. Uh, for instance, uh, well, you can write the patch if AppStream hasn't provided anyone any patch yet. Uh, you can also prepare a security update for other release, uh, because when you have made the effort to do it for one release, it's often helpful to prepare it for unstable if the maintainer is really busy or if the security team uh, kindly asks some help, uh, well, we, we do provide it. Uh, we can also work on the infrastructure, uh, which means mainly the security tracker, but also on various packages themselves, uh, either to enable things which are useful in, in from the security perspective, like the hardening flags, or uh, adding an auto package test because well when you do a security update you want to test the package so that you don't break it for others uh, we don't know all the software in debian so when there are auto package tests we do run them and uh, so we try to help to add them as well this is the kind of thing that we allow to do when uh, we have work hours and no if there are no <laughs> urgency or no current uh, package uh, to uh, to fix yes sorry and the last rule uh, is who decides in case of problem well friction being the trusted intermediary it's friction who decides and friction is basically me <laughs> and my wife uh, so if there are issue uh, there is someone who can decide most day day to day work is now managed by uh, Olga Levsen we will dispatch work hours and uh, collect reports and stuff like that but uh, yeah. most decisions are taken uh, by consensus among all the paid contributors but in case of issue uh, there's a last resort so lessons learned uh, well it's possible to pay Debian contributors without disrupting the entire community I say this because well for a long time, the, the topic of money in Debian has been a uh, taboo because we had a big incident uh, in 2005, I think, uh, where a uh, Debian leader tried to pay the release manager to get a, c a release quicker out. It was a good idea. It, it seemed like a good idea in, in principle because, well, release management is tedious work and it takes a lot of time at release time in a specific point. But obviously, uh, uh, the money was from Debian, uh, or well, the money was uh, uh, targeted to release manager by the Debian uh, uh, leader, and nobody else had any say, and nobody else was, be or few people were being paid at that time in Debian, so it didn't go well. And in fact, many people, or a few people, uh, uh, tried to find new RC b or release critical bugs to actually delay the release that they wanted to be faster by paying people, so <laughs> in the end it didn't work uh, very well. And uh, ever since, well, I it's kind of taboo uh, topic in Debian. But it's coming again, because in the last uh, leadership uh, discussion, prior to the election, uh, well, at least one leader uh, suggested the idea to use money to pay people to do work. And uh, well, we had some interesting discussion, but no big uh, flame war and no disruption. Um, well, in 10 years, uh, the situation changed. Many of us are now working in open source and free software as part of our professional life. It's not only a hobby. And uh, well, so we can go forward possibly. Still, we must be careful. And I think uh, those rules. Uh, that I tried to follow for the Debian LTS are a good starting point. 
uh, everything you do must be done transparently in an inclusive way, meaning everybody gets a fair chance to participate. Well, there must be rules always, but uh, there must be uh, they must be clearly documented and so that the expectations are clear. Obviously, you don't want to get anyone locked in a position while being paid because uh, if he can continue to be paid, he will prefer this and so he will make choices that may prevent others from taking over. That is bad. Uh, so you have to have rules to avoid this. And well, Obviously, you must be aware that it will change things, possibly for the good, but possibly also in bad ways. When money comes into play, uh, prior priorities of people will change. So, and this is where I will hand out a few ideas. What could we use money for in Debian? <coughs> uh, but actually, there are many ideas. One is package maintenance. Stra it's strange because it's at the core of what we do and uh, uh, it doesn't seem natural to suggest this, but actually when you think of it, there are many packages that uh, users want but nobody in Debian cares about. They are possibly orphaned. Or maybe there are softwares that are not yet in Debian that users really want but that nobody in Debian cares about. And actually it's part of my business, <laughs> Friction as a web page where I offer to package something into Debian for someone. And I do have at least five or six customers uh, like this. Uh, on the opposite side, I'm paying a uh, Debian maintainer to maintain uh, Triton. It's a software that I use for accounting. It's free software. That was an one of the early choices that I made to do all my accounting with free software. Unfortunately, it's not really popular software, so <laughs> at some point uh, the guy said, oh, enough is enough, uh, it's too much work for me, uh, I don't want to maintain it anymore. Uh, I said, I'm using it, I need it. Uh, so uh, uh, I paid for the updates and I will continue to pay, but it's a bit a lot of money for just me uh, as a company. But again, this idea of sharing the cost at uh, many with many others I is a good idea. We can obviously fund new infrastructure. Uh, in Debian uh, we have this project of uh, having a package archi archive uh, uh, for, for each package so that we can provide multiple versions in parallel but uh, nobody gets to implement it. Uh, I maintain tracker Debian.org. There are Dozens of good ideas uh, as wishlist bugs that I would like to see implemented and I would not mind if people were being paid to implement them. There's a limit because uh, obviously uh, I still want to review and review <laughs> reviewing takes time. So if we go in this direction, there might be issue uh, to consider uh, that uh, you might also want to compensate the work of the reviewer, not only of the person who is doing the, the work. There are also plenty of uh, repetitive and syntax tasks, like the new review or the review of unblock request during freeze. Uh, why not possibly uh, using money to get those <coughs> things done? Th they are often a uh, blocking point in the sense that other Debian developers are waiting for them before being able to continue. So it's a good idea to bring we need to streamline th those kind of process. More recently, I also read uh, an article of Molly DeBlanc who, wa uh, who was suggesting to pay leadership role because, well, uh, being Debian project leader is uh, a part-time job, really. So only people who have enough income uh, uh, can afford to run. Because if you well have to work five days a day, uh, five days a week to have enough money to live, you won't spend two days for Debian. Uh, so it's uh, that would be a way to have more candidates and be less res uh, restrictive. Well, that's it. I'm opening a, a kind of forums or a debate on the where we could use Debian uh, money in Debian. Now it's up to you.
Um, now that Red Hat got bought uh, by IBM um, and we have LTS established and proven, uh, might what do you see maybe some more requests for Debian as a long-term supported Linux distribution and related to this? Um, a big company like Google, when they want to cooperate, when they need a provider of a Debian distribution, Debian-based distro, they go to Canonical because somehow Canonical crossed a threshold to be visible to Google. And uh, smaller companies like Creative, they are not on the screen. Why do you think is Creative uh, not on the screen, but Canonical is? Well, why? I don't know. But uh, it's a matter of fact, yes, that uh, for very big corporation, you, you have those... Uh, rules so if you have a company is an unclear support contract uh, you can work with them and uh, otherwise you can't uh, i don't have any clear solution to this but uh, uh, well it's a problem uh, it's a wrong problem technical ways because uh, there are plenty of companies who have the skills required to maintain debian and to provide support to debian but we have no clear standardized offer uh, Maybe it's something that the uh, Debian project should think about it. I mean, certifying some partners as being competent enough, but I don't know how it would work. It's not really, really uh, interesting as uh, free software contribution, so it's not the kind of thing that gets organized, but that would be useful still. So maybe uh, a way to use money to organize this. <laughs> I don't know. Um, on another subject, uh, how do you reconcile the fact that LTS is paid work that depends on infrastructure that is run by volunteers? For instance, uh, you upload packages to Debian Archive. The Debian Archive is maintained by a set of volunteers that's very overworked. How do you reconcile those two things? Uh, well, I don't. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm obviously the question comes up when we want to change the rules. I mean, uh, when we want to, to add a, a new architecture, uh, we have to ask uh, uh, build the admins and DSA whether they are okay to keep the servers up for uh, two more years, and we have to accept those. Uh, and when uh, we get a, a no, well, we do it outside, like uh, I did it with uh, extended LTS. Uh, but, well, basic LTS is a sort of uh, middle ground that is well accepted. I mean, everybody is aware that, uh, well, companies do need five years of support and uh, that it was an important requirement. So, well, that's it. That said, I'm not opposed to uh, share incomes. I mean, if uh, if I uh, if we had to give s some money back to help with the support of the infrastructure, we would be able to do it. And in fact, with uh, extended LTS project, we we do have some spare money uh, that we will use to spo to sponsor DebConf uh, this year. So yes. So. Um, uh a few months ago, I was in a conference uh, from VLC, who were explaining their economical model. So they have uh, an enterprise like Friction, who supports VLC, and uh, this didn't make them evil. So <laughs> they, they succeed to, to do good work, to maintain VLC, to develop a lot of stuff around VLC, and also uh, they, they also uh, declined offers of publicity uh, of companies who wanted to inject publicity on VLC, so they really are not evil people, even if they get paid for what they do. So is there, uh, do you know other projects that are in Debian that think about this, about sponsoring our work, development work? And uh, is there, um, I don't know, a, a project of discussing things about how to get paid for everything. And in that case, you would also uh, pay the, 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 the everyone, everyone that you rely on. So uh, are there projects to talk about it and to 
maybe not consider it as a taboo anymore? Yes, there are. So, uh, obviously, uh, there are projects like uh, uh, the Linux Foundation uh, founding core infrastructure and injecting money into OpenSSL and this, that kind of project. But I have seen recently a company uh, called Tide Tidelift, which is trying to generalize uh, the well, the, the way to inject money into all software and not only on the base packages that uh, we all rely on. Uh, uh, actually, I noted to contact them and to start a discussion, but I never went that far. But uh, it's uh, an old timer of GNOME, I think, he, he who is be behind this project. Yeah, we're close to over, but I don't mind uh, taking more questions either here or after, like you want. Spell the name of the company you mentioned. Just Tidelift. T T uh, I D E uh, L I F T. Okay, thank you. And in the Debian community, is there a, a discussion going on about this kind of stuff? Uh, so you talked about the incident. So after this, has it been some other discussions about being paid for developing things in Debian? Uh. From time to time, but not really, uh, well, I, as I said, it was really uh, taboo, so not, not much discussion. This year in the DPLD election, we, we discussed this a bit. Uh, it was a, a, an important part of the project of Martin Michelmeyer, who's a Debian old-timer like me, except that he bit of stopped contributing because, well, he, he, he's doing open source as a... Uh, work, but not as a side project anymore. And uh, he wanted to, to reconcile Debian and his work life in some way. Uh, yeah, we are out of time. Maybe you can ask questions in the, in the hallway. Yes, sure. Uh, you can go, go and grab me, I'm here uh, until to tomorrow. I guess we can, we can thank all our, uh, Rafael and all our speakers from this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you.